welcome to Hair in the Hawthorne. And I realised earlier that I've been introducing myself as the only host of this video channel. And I'm not. <laughs> I'm not the only host. So my name's Kate Ray. I have regularly sitting with me now. I don't know how it happened, but it happened. I've got Neil Rushton. We have been having a chat and we have realised that in all the midst of everything that we have been talking about on this channel, the guests that we've had, etc., we haven't really done an introduction to what the fairies are, what fae is. Um, this is going to be a guide from our perspective. This isn't going to be uh, a bog standard guide. This is what we know, what we've experienced. It's from a, a plethora of different sources, from folklore to uh, reading about modern experiences, from chatting to different people. So it's not going to be your sort of bog, bog standard rundown of, of what fairies are um, in terms of fluttery things. And just before, just before we came on, this happens all the time. I've been getting sort of, I know orbs are a big thing in, in the whole paranormal community about orbs, it's just dust and it could be dust, but I've been having things floating around. So if you do see anything sort of whizzing by, then just uh, just give me the heads up of when when you've seen it. So hello, Neil, and, uh, and, and welcome back and thank you. Hello, Kate. Thank you very much. Um, uh, now that I am officially your, your, your partner in crime, it's, you are? Uh, yeah, delighted to be here. Fairy partner in crime. Oh. That sounds so wrong. That sounds so wrong. So <laughs> I, I want to start, I want to start off. I want to start off by asking you. And I mean, it's a huge question. It's a huge question about what are fairies? Yeah, that's a that's a very big question. Um, you know, many books have been written about uh, such a question. Um, uh, well, I'd be I would wouldn't like to put too much of a tight definition on what a fairy is. Um, whether you consider the fairies as within the realm uh, solely within the realm of folklore. Mm -hmm of which we have hundreds, perhaps even thousands of years of tradition. And the what I usually call the taxonomy of fairies um, comes mainly from the folklore. Mm -hmm. That's that's what, what we're talking about. And the, the the folklore then feeds into what you know Shakespeare's Midsummer's Night Dream, um, other other plays, books, novels, fiction, and then, you know, things started to change around the 19th, 20th century when the fairies, and it's, it's, it's quite a, a, an oblique reason for why the fairies of folklore, um, the typical fairies we, we think of from folkloric sources, turned into what I would say the majority of people these days think of when you say, a fairy they think of a tinkerbell winged type fairy and that only really happened in the 19th century um and you suddenly get a plethora of artwork and uh new stories about these kind of these kind of, th these kind of fairies which most people will 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 think of you know that that, that tinkerbell type um but before the 19th century there is a kind of a, a rather more tight definition of what a fairy is. Basically, they're supernatural creatures that are able to interact with humanity under certain conditions. Mm -hmm. And, and you know, this is uh, amongst people who study the fairies in folklore, it's a well-trodden aphorism that most people in the past were afraid of the fairies. Mm -hmm you would not be invoking fairies mm -hmm. to come and help you. And if you did, you would probably end up in trouble. Mm -hmm. uh, so there's a, that's quite a difference between that traditional folkloric fair, vision of fairies and what a lot of people think now, especially, say, in the neo-pagan community or, 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 or the Wiccan community or whatever, they, they seem to have much more positive attitude towards the fairies. Mm -hmm. Whereas, like I say, in the past, and we'll talk about this in, in, in a moment, uh, they were to be feared and avoided mm. because they were often up to mischief. So that's, that's, a, very, that's a very rambling uh, attempt to define what the fairies are. Uh, and it's, that's not really an accident because it's very difficult to actually pin down 
what a fairy is, even if you talk about different types. So uh, a fairy, a gnome, uh, even Sasquatch, mm -hmm. you know, the, these crypto um, beings, um, uh, uh, um, extraterrestrial aliens, um, uh, ghosts. Mm -hmm. Could they all become, could they somehow be wrapped up within that, that taxonomy of what we call the fairies? So, uh, so sorry, that's, that's, that's not the best definition of fairies, <laughs> but it, it, I, I'm only kind of rambling like that and, and going through all of these d uh, different segues because it's extremely difficult to pin them down. Massively, massively. I mean, for me, just that whole thing that these fall into a range of, uh, ethereal or um, manifest through energy and have some kind of form which we perceive as material and can sometimes actually manifest as material you know you do get a huge gambit with, that falls within that realm like you say like the uh, cryptids and the aliens and and you know um, do, do all of those fall within that, that same plane and that same realm or uh, for me you know you were talking going back to and it's often a question I ask myself, and this is a little, little deeper than, than the, the sort of the basics. But when, when you were speaking about the, the history going from being fearful of the Fae uh, and these uh, malevolent levels, and uh, this was across the board, you know, you didn't speak ill of, of the fair folk for fear of, uh, for fear of attack or, you know, their, their presence or curses or whatever you. And then we do have this transition and we have this transition at a, a time when culture and society, we had, especially within Western culture, we had a lot more leisure time. And we also had the growing kind of seeds of a, a sexual revolution that was going off um, where people had a lot more freedom. People were gathering much more en masse. So people went in rural communities. And with that, the fairy then within culture grew into this sexualized being and often very scantily clad, perfectly formed uh, humanoids, generally women, very voluptuous, attached to alcohol, attached to the kind of mischievous, naughtier side, the kind of, um, you know, show a bit of bit of thigh side of things as opposed to the really uh, malevolent side where, where they'd had before. And, and I do think that that played into it. And the question for me, which is for another day, definitely for another day to explore is, did that evolution of the fairies, did they actually evolve like that alongside, you know, did they modernize themselves? Do they modernize themselves? You know, um, do they see our world? Do they have a different scope of, of time and, and, and of culture and, and how they kind of project out in the world is another massive question. But going back, I think in, in, a, in a nutshell, fairies aren't winged beings and, and in folklore, we very rarely see them. As, as, as winged beings before, before that time. And a lot of people's encounters, modern encounters and folkloric encounters have been a little bit more grisly, haven't they? Oh yeah, without, without a doubt. Um, uh, uh, although what, just going back to what you said about the sexualization of the fairies, and that's definitely true, mm -hmm. but uh, the, there's pl plenty of sex going on in the folklore. Mm -hmm. Uh, and there are, it, it, well, actually, does it does it work one gender to, to the other? Is it male to female, female to male? Probably about 50-50, actually, mm -hmm. yeah. in terms of, uh, you know, a fairy seductress. Yes, or, and, and the or, glamour side of it. Yeah, although, although that works the other way around. I'm thinking of a, of a folklore story from Cornwall called Cherry of Zeno. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure whether you've come across that. That's where the, the, the young girl, Cherry, uh, like a 16 year old girl gets um, tempted by a gentleman who she didn't know was a fairy, but is, is evidently um, a, a fairy who tempts her into fairyland. Mm -hmm. And, you know, not, it doesn't end well. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, exactly what you're saying about uh, the grisly side of it. I mean, she escapes with her life, but mm -hmm. um, uh, let me think, it's her, it's her mother-in-law who, who, who gives her a very hard time once she once she reached fairyland and there's even a scene in it where cherry enters a chamber that she's been forbidden to enter 
and there are a load of stone statues which come alive and they're controlled by some kind of fairy force. Very, very weird, almost sci-fi story from dating from the 18th century. Um, so, so, so what I'm trying to say is that you, that sexualization has always been uh, at least a proportion of the folklore. It has. Um, but, but, but I agree, it's become more in your face mm -hmm. uh, now. But, but going, but one thing. I'm talking about, uh, you, you know, you said, oh, you know, what is a fairy? And you, I'm saying, well, the folkloric types, the modern types, the 19th century types. But um, what do they look like? Mm -hmm. And I would say they can look like many, many different things. But if you want to just get under the skin of what is certainly a traditional fairy type mm -hmm. or, fa or fairy types, running right up and running right up to now you can't do any better than look at a book that you've talked about many times um uh and you know a lot of people will be very familiar with that book by brian frude and alan lee let's see if i can just find a a nice little example of what there you go here's a good one so there you go yeah those kind of chats. So, if you're thinking folkloric fairies, yeah, that 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 kind of that kind of thing is another one. So, it, 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 and in other ways, that's a great book as well. Mm. The fairies, you know, it's three over three decades old now. But it was it 1973. I think that was the first. No, no, no. It's later than that. Was it? Uh, I think I think I think it's 78. Ah. Definitely, I, knew it was, I, I knew it was in the 70s. I, I, I'm going to I'm going to name drop now. I had the uh, I had the pleasure of going uh, to Brian and Wendy's house and I was uh, completely dumbstruck for uh, for a couple of days. But I plucked up enough courage to talk to, to Brian about his artwork and, um, and, and and had a really quite a, a, lot, a lengthy conversation about um, where he how he gets these images where where these images come from and he he basically said these things come into my studio and they want to be painted you yeah. know that that was a general gist of it you know he he goes out into nature he lives in in you know um in a very sort of bleak moorland uh, place but he goes out into nature and, and most of the time he says he gets bothered by them until until he sits down and paints them and then they go away when <laughs> when they kind of but I love the idea of, of him and I mean there is times in his artwork and this is a tangent I'm sorry but there is times in his artwork where you can definitely see his wife Wendy um the resemblance because to him he is you know went sorry Wendy is the the fairy queen uh but these sort of uh gnarlier creatures the more naturalistic creatures uh, definitely for me that that is makes up a, a huge proportion however I, I do believe that there are that there is that glamour element now whether these gnarly creatures can project that glamour to be uh, a certain type of beauty that we see within our society where they show themselves as beautiful men and beautiful women and whether that's a glamour that they put over themselves or whether they are that energy or uh, being within their own realm, I'm never quite sure about that aspect. I, th I think that you have to accept that there's quite a lot of cultural coding going yes. on with certainly modern fair experiences. And uh, I know I've talked to you before about my own experiences, both um, through taking psychedelics mm -hmm. and through the condition I have called Charles Bonnet syndrome. And whenever I have experienced the fairies, they have definitely taken on a Brian Frude mm -hmm. type type. Now, do I believe that's, as, as you say, it's, it's, it's an unknowable, mm -hmm. um, uh, uh, qu the, the question is unknowable mm -hmm. about whether they look like that all the time from wherever they come from, or whether they just appear to our human consciousness in that way because we perhaps are expecting them to, mm -hmm. to be that way and so someone who uh, the other end of the scale someone who's been brought up with that winged fairy type mm -hmm. may they that's what they may see mm -hmm. whatever, whatever their energy form or 
the some or an interdimensional being whatever it is that's coming through gets coded mm -hmm. towards your expectations to to a to a degree i mm -hmm. think I, I i that that certainly seems the the case with me because uh so we'll talk in a moment about the fairy investigation society and their mm -hmm. survey of uh, you know hundreds of uh, accounts of fairy encounters and many of them will be with winged fairies yes the and um so perhaps um uh, the over the 19th 20th, 21st century maybe some of the fairy realm or whatever you want to call it has changed to yeah. coordinate with our culturally coded expectations i totally agree i think uh, on our last video somebody had put a comment about when we were talking about the woolerton gnomes and they said that they had uh, they had the belief, um, and it was a backed up belief um, that uh, dwarves and gnomes will wear certain colours to denote their rank in in a hierarchy with, with the jobs that they do. And I, I believe that of, of all the fae that they will present themselves in a way not only of our cultural coding but also what kind of element that they uh, dwell in and what kind of work and what kind of job that they do. I, I will tell you briefly, again, I don't know whether I've spoke about it on this, this channel. So for me, the winged fairies are so far out of my, um, my thinking when I come to, to, to fae, you know, it is the sort of gnarly, <clears throat> gnarly creatures. And one of my experiences, a very brief experience, was it wasn't winged so much as it was admit, emitting light um, that looked like wings. So I wonder whether often people interpret uh, an energy coming through and the energy is that intense at that moment that it sparks out sort of winged type shapes. And it, it made me question you know, is that where that that kind of thing comes from? The other thing that came from our last video, I had a lady who contacted me and said that she had um, she had seen a, a winged light being uh, very, very briefly uh, many years ago and had had real difficulty getting explanation uh, about why she had encountered it. And I also believe that when you see these the, the lighter side and the uh, when, when they come through that kind of energetic lightness, it's a time when we need that kind of energy in our lives. I know it's very hippy dippy and whatever you, but and, and I often ask the question of, question of people: Did you need that energy at that point in your life? And the answer usually is absolutely. You know, and I'll say, well, there you go. There's your, there's your answer of your encounter. You you needed. For, for that to, to awaken something within yourself to be able to move on move forward um and and to to fulfill something with it within your life why do you think they visit what why do you think they show themselves to to certain people i, I think that's the biggest question i think mm. that's the biggest question of the lot and again i'm sorry i don't have a simple answer for you but um i've become convinced over the years of studying it as you know that um, uh, it's down to human consciousness mm -hmm. and how human consciousness can be altered uh, to, to many and various different degrees of mm -hmm. alteration. And as soon as that happens, the potential for something that doesn't usually exist within physical reality is able to enter, but it's completely dependent on your consciousness mm -hmm. perceiving it. Mm -hmm. um, uh, I would go as far as to say is that if there were no humans, there would be no fairies. Ooh, interesting. That's a, that's a little bit. So some people won't like that. Mm. But uh, I think they are dependent on human consciousness. And so they get that symbiotic relationship from yes, our energy. But, yes, but <clears throat> that doesn't answer the question of, well, why, why, why would they want to do that? And mm. I don't, I don't think we can answer that that question, to be honest. And unless we can get one, sit him or her down and say, "What are you doing here? Why? What are you doing?" And they'll probably go, "I don't know." That's I, that's so, probably a fairy answer. Stock stock answers. I don't know. Oh, they they wouldn't know. They wouldn't. Know, they, that's the problem. <laughs> you know, they're they're tricksters. They're not gonna they're not gonna give you a a, a, a full rundown of what they are, what they are, why they are, and why they come here. <laughs> yeah, With, true. I, I, during some of my uh, the, the the experiences 
that I have with Charles Bonnet syndrome. I have attempted to ask them questions and they'll always avoid it. They avoid, mm -hmm. they just laugh at me or, or, or avoid it. And so mm -hmm. I've never got a stray answer from, from a fairy. No. <laughs> No, you can't. You can't imagine getting one either. I mean, I, I was always under the belief, and I and I do believe this that they can't lie. However, they will do everything in their power to avoid, evade, uh, create distractions. Um, you, you know, an, an untruth won't come out of the mouth if they can if they can help it. Uh, but they don't work in the same kind of way that we work. I mean, we we are really really complex. Uh, he, you know, human beings are really, really complex things, you know, and um, not for our benefit either, I don't think. And I think there's, there's a, a pure simplicity in the, in the fey realm where um, the essence of, of that being is the essence of that being. And there, are the, there is no kind of huge complexities about it. It's just that's how they are. Yeah, and that, you know, when you break down, say, the, the fairies, in, taking the theosophical kind of position where you break the fairy types down into gnomes, undines, salamanders, and sylphs, they all have their very specific attributes. Mm -hmm. And they only do that. They can't change. Yeah. And there's, again, there's something that, that's a deeper, that there's, some, there's a deeper meaning to that, I think, mm -hmm. but one which certainly from my own perspective i've only begun to to investigate and so this, this is turning into you you asking me questions and me sort of giving you a vague answer and no i love it coming out of it which which is a very fairy like thing you know mm. everything's everything's vague so slightly elusive mm -hmm. um uh so that's just how that's just the, how we are i think anybody who sits down and says i do have all the answers about about fairies is is very very wrong and I've read many books that have attempted and uh, and there are elements to all those books that that um and I do have to go with these things I have to go on gut instinct you know of, of what I find to be more truthful than not and and what sits well with me uh with my own experiences and, and research I mean we were chatting uh, just before we came on about you know do do we do the whole you know talking about the seely and the unseely courts, you know, the, the good and the bad side of fairies. And we both said, you know, that's not something that really sits well with us because these beings are just beings, you know, good and bad really doesn't exist in the same kind of ethical way that it does within the human realm, whether it's in the fairy realm, they have a, a, a different set of ethics, it seems, doesn't it? It's like I've said before, you know, a snake doesn't slither around in the grass going, I'm mean, I'm bad, <laughs> I'm aware of that, and I'm going to bite people, you know. It just yep. is a snake. It just is a snake. You know, it's neither malevolent or benevolent. It just is, you know. Um, and I, I get that sense from from Faye um, that they're, they're not split, they're not black and white. There's nothing black and white about, about this realm. Um, and the more we try to pin things down, the more poof, elusive those things become and the bigger the questions around them sort of generate, don't they? Yeah, no doubt about it. Um, but shall, shall, we, shall we get on to... Uh, Please do. You know, yeah. if, 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 if someone's, if anyone is watching and they want an introduction to, to what the fairies are, perhaps we can just sort of give them a, a few, um, few little insights and pointers to, yeah. to where, where they might like to go. And, you know, I know it's unpopular these days, but uh, you may have to read some books. Yeah, it's. Uh, I know every everything's available on the internet. Well, no, everything is not available on the internet these days, and sometimes you just need to um, get a book and read it in order to uh, uh, absorb the information. So I've got. I've just. I'll just go through a few which I think uh, would would be very useful for anyone just coming up to to this subject. Whatever whatever perspective you're coming from, whether you're a hardcore materialist reductionist or whether you are a little bit more open-minded or whether you're just full on the fairies exist and I just need to find out more about them. So <clears throat> as we always say, and you know, as we've been dis dis discussing here, you, you've got to start at the folklore. You've got to start at the traditional folklore mm -hmm. of where the fairies came from. And you, that you can go, that will take you down many roads and paths, but 
you've got to start there before uh, starting to think that you're going to be having all sorts of fairy experiences mm -hmm. and that's the only thing that matters in, in, the, in the present moment. So how do you find out about the folklore? Right, um, the, I'd say the starting point is Catherine Briggs, who is a folklorist in the 20th century. She, di uh, she died 1980, 1981. Um, and she was great, and her, her PhD thesis was on the fairies. Basically, every she's written a dozen books, and they're mm. all about the fairies, most specifically in 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 the tradition of in the folkloric tradition, um, and also in in literature. Mm -hmm. So, the best one, the great, the best starting point. Catherine Briggs is the Encyclopedia of Fairies, um, uh, year 1978. I'm pretty sure that's. I've got a hands up there. I, I haven't got that. I haven't. I, I need to get that. I, I mean, I, I bank myself on having a fairly good fairy library, but yeah, I've got 19, to get that nine, one. 1976, and you getting it will be quite difficult because it's been out of print for a while, and the, each copy goes for a big sum. So I'm afraid anybody to want have... to sponsor me out there and get me a copy. But or you could go to the library and, um, you know, yeah. li uh, libraries still exist in certain places. So you can get it from the library. Uh, it's brilliant. It's as, as the name suggests, it's an encyclopedia. So it goes through all different fairy types, different mm -hmm. stories, uh, gives lots of nice little references for you to follow up. It's just the best starting point. Um, so uh, you can either splash out a couple of hundred dollars on it that's how much it costs uh, or you go down the library and and and, and uh, 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 get it from there uh, that's I mean that's just Catherine Briggs is that's that's a little bit more straight that book talking okay. about fairies in tradition and literature mm -hmm. um, then you could go to a source mm -hmm. a direct source uh, a primary source and the best one once you've done with Catherine Briggs you can go and find yourself The Fairy Faith in Celtic Countries by W.Y. Evans Vents, who uh, later translate, was the first person to translate the Tibetan Book of the Dead. That's probably what he's more famous for. Um, but before he did that, in 1911, uh, just before the First World War, he wrote Fairy Faith in Celtic Countries. And it's basically him. Tra he's an American, and he came over and traveled around the country for uh, Britain, uh, Scotland, Wales, mm -hmm. Ireland, Brittany, um, Cornwall, uh, looking at the fairy traditions. And so traveling mostly in rural communities mm -hmm. um, where the, 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 the people still believed in the fairies, mm -hmm. very much so. And he collected all of those stories and they're fascinating. It's just mm -hmm. a great read. It's, it, 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 he does go off onto some sort of anthropological excursions of explanation, which probably don't go down so well today, but the stories themselves are the best primary sources of fairies in Britain and Ireland mm -hmm. uh, from, from that time, right at the end, just before the, the, the first world war everything changed after the first mm. world war rural communities started to split up technology started to take over so it's it's, it's a lovely little um pinpoint of time that he captures brilliant book um if you want to hear uh, the, coming out into the 20th century you can try marjorie johnson's seeing fairies which again is a collection of stories that she's collected from people who have had experience with fairies. And it's very notes. I mean, that's she. She was writing that in the. It, it wasn't actually published until the twenty first century, but most mm. of the examples are from the tw late twentieth century. Mm. And the difference between when she was collecting those stories and Evans Vents, only like 50, 60 years before, mm. is enormous. Mm. So there will be a lot of winged fairies in yeah. Marjorie Johnson's book, No Wing Fairies in mm. W.Y. Evans Vent's book. So that's that's a nice that's a nice that supports our argument of that cultural coding mm. going on uh, in a very short space of time actually. What um, I what uh, I really like about that particular book is mm. she's unafraid to give her opinion and to yeah. almost state it as fact. She she's unafraid to do that and I, I really appreciate that because her opinions and her questioning um, the stories that are, that are presented actually gives massive food, food for thought about, um, about what's going on. Uh, and yeah. I, I read it almost 
as her writing it. I, I, it's a very personal, I think a very personal uh, book uh, and um, intimate. It's a very intimate book. It is. And she comes across as just lovely, doesn't mm, she? She does. She's, she's, I mean, she lived till she was 100. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm glad about that. And I'd have loved to have met Marjorie. She was, yeah. Uh, She'd be fantastic. So, so just a couple more books. I've got yep. an eye on the eye on the clock. Um, yep. uh, uh, I could I could have just spent a couple of hours doing this. You know, here's another. We will do. One. We will. I, I think we in could, the future we, could, we, we will do. do. Yep. Just get out, have a library session, and just just get a ton of books out. And yeah, no, I like I like the sound of that. Now this is a little bit more esoteric. Oh cunning yes. folk, yeah, yeah. Cunning folk and familiar spirits by the wonderful Emma Wilby, who and I won't go into this too much but she's writing about what she sees as a hidden form of shamanism that exists that continued from pagan pre-christian paganism mm -hmm. underground yeah throughout europe and you start to get glimpses of it in the 16th century mm -hmm. it's it's, it, it's a very convincing thesis that she wow. puts forward and of course a lot of these people that she's you know examples that she's taking from the 16th 17th century are dealing with fairies mm -hmm all of the cunning folk they would have had their familiar etc as mm -hmm. so there's lots of fairy stories in there from that time brilliant brilliant book and finally just because it's one of the most uh influential books on me that i read decades ago mm -hmm. and that's leslie grinsell's folklore yeah. of prehistoric sites in britain unfortunately another one out of print that you'll have to fork out quite a lot of money for but um it's uh, basically it's a gazetteer of prehistoric archaeological sites with attached folklore and there's a lot of fairy folklore attached to, to these sites brilliant, there is brilliant. there is and i, I mean we, i think we should actually do a show just about that because it's a, it's a big passion of mine going to these places um I, I'm always envious of you about how you can remember dates and stuff. I mean, I, I did my degree in history and I, I am the worst historian ever. I, <laughs> I, I can't even remember my own birthday most of the time, let alone chronological dates of stuff. I just go, yeah, it was about Neolithic or it was bronze. Like, oh, I don't know when it was, you know, around about. It was old. That's why I go down. Yeah, it that, was that's old. good enough. That's good enough. And but but of course, you know, for, for those, I should just mention a few online sources yeah, please. that you, you could you could go to um no no um uh, you shouldn't do this at the expense of reading books that's, that's, mm -hmm. that's what i would say but there is a lot you can find online and you know this has increased exponentially over the last decade or so um and without wanting to um be completely self-promoting you could go to dead but dreaming and uh find what I've been writing about since 2016. There's about 60 articles there now, most of them by me, not all of this and guest authors sometimes. And um, I just attempt to, you know, integrate the folklore with a modern, um, a more modern idea of what, what the fairies are. Mm -hmm. the, the other source that I've got to recommend is um, David Halpin's Circle Stories, which is on Facebook. So just mm -hmm. go to Facebook and put Circle Stories into the search engine you will find david's he's brilliant i mm -hmm. love the way he writes he's he searches out the folklore but he's always got something incisive to say about the folklore and bring it up to date um he's he, you get and he's so prolific i'm very jealous about prolific it's like two articles a week it's like how do you do that um uh, uh and it's 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 brilliant you know each one's about i don't know about a thousand word article sort of thing with all the sources and some 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 very funky interpretations so do go and search search that out um and then there's the fairy investigation society in fact the fairy investigation society is probably the place you want to start mm -hmm. because i mean they have a, have a website uh they have a good facebook pre presence uh and you can find out about them there but uh they i should say sorry it's run by si uh, our friend uh simon young who's you know one of the top fairy folklorists in in the world and he's brilliant at coordinating all of this information and mm -hmm. if you go along to their website you can join anyone can join the fairy investigation society for free just by i'm seeing i'm seeing your lights now. i know i'm just i keep <laughs> following him <laughs> You can join the Fairy Investigation mm -hmm. Society for free uh, yeah, by um, 
uh, by just sending them an email and then every year you get two newsletters and the newsletters are just chock a full mm. of brilliant articles lots of information uh some book reviews um up to date you know the books you would never find out about uh get a listing on the fairy investigation society survey um and you, you, if you go on to the Fairy Investigation Society and join, or even if you don't join, you can there find the survey that we've just we mentioned uh, mm. a few minutes ago, which was carried, which was published in 2017 by Simon Young on the site, and about 500 um, encounter reports mm. uh, or testimonies, which uh, are just it's such a massive source of information. And there's another one coming out. Mm -hmm. I think it was supposed to be this year. It, um, um forgive me if it's not this year but next year but w mm -hmm. whatever um the, 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 the it's a great resource these 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 te these testimonies from mm -hmm. a vast array of types of people mm -hmm. <laughs> who 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 were reporting these um uh, the, the, these in these encounters so um yeah uh, that, that's the play. Oh, and, and of course, the, the survey at the moment is, is still ongoing. So if you think you've had a fairy encounter of any type, you can go on, fill out the form, very sort of simple kind of form that, that, that you input into the survey, and that will be included anonymously in the, the next publication of the Fairy Investigation Society census or survey. So that's, I, I think that's enough for people to be getting on with. Some people watching this will know all about this. And, yeah. Um, but, but, but for someone who's just getting into it, I think that's, these are probably some of the starting points. I mean, I often say to people with, uh, with starting, you know, I, I know that uh, folklore is very, <clears throat> very important, but I think with all these things, start where you're drawn. Uh, for me, my, my first one was, was um, you know, fairies, Alan Lee and Brian Froud, and um, it was the imagery. I'm, I'm a very mm. visual person, so it was very much the imagery that, that drew me in and my understanding, my interpretation, and, and uh, that came from, from that as a, as, a, as a base layer because it's the first time that I saw fairies being depicted how I knew in my heart fairies were so that that was my first port of call so I'm always happy to see that book coming up I've got a couple of books very very quickly very very basic so the the first one I did a book review on uh last year the year before so it's way down in the videos but the first one is the fairy bible um and that is Teresa Morey don't let the um the cover which I think is hideous for such a good book, or the uh, illustrations, which kind of are not my taste. Very, you know, it's not not within my taste. Don't let them put you off. It is a, a quick stop guide, a really quick stop guide, and uh, in in a nutshell, will give you each of the fairies. It gives you some brief explanation of what fairies are, the realm that they live in, etc. I particularly like this one and do promote it because the fact that if in doubt, don't. So she she promotes this. Don't communicate with them if you're in doubt. Don't invite them in if you're in doubt because she's still very much in that that um, that folklorish realm of you know these things aren't there to you know grant you three wishes they're not there for that you know they're <laughs> they've got their own agenda so i i particularly like that one as a, as a starting point and uh, as a reference to jump off onto other things i'll have a quick flick through that if i haven't heard of a a particular type of fairy or i'm not particularly well versed with it the other one which tends to be a little more on the the the, the light side of things but um, again a really good starting point for uh, information very basic information is the, I don't know whether you can see that very well, uh, Fairy Treasury. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and that's Jackie Newcomb and uh, Alison Geddes. So again, this one is from their perspective, which is very good. But what I do like about this is um, something that, that you don't see in a lot of fairy books is things like almost the scientific kind of study on on the names the meanings the origins etc so it has that's packed full of information my library however this is about as light and bright as it gets <laughs> my library is more oh fairies demonic 
do they haunt and harm people? You know, I'm, I'm more in that side of things. How to protect yourself from the Fae. I have that kind of library stock. And I think that's definitely one that we'll do uh, another day. Me and Neil will sit down and, and talk about the harmful uh, side of, of the Fae and, and maybe do a bit about, I'm, I'm tentative about saying this, but how to help protect yourself keep yourself safe within those realms and how to kind of uh, spot when things go wrong. Because we know even from the modern census, the uh, Faring Investigation Society census that things do and will mm. go wrong. So if in doubt, Absolutely. don't, you know, yep. don't, don't, don't do this whole, Oh, I'm invoking the fairies. It's like, which one, which, which, which one are you invoking? You know? Yeah. And, and why are you doing it? Yes, yeah. That's a, that's, that's a good question. So, so, sorry. I, I did just forget yes, please, to, please, to please. Uh, see, seeing that you know um catherine briggs's fairies is so difficult to get hold of yep. uh last year uh, morgan daimler who's not yes, an expert yeah, yeah. researcher into the yeah. fairies published uh, uh i've only got it in kindle I can't show you the, the cover of it uh, i've got uh, it uh, but it's not in this bit of the library space so i can't even okay. jump off and get it but it's excellent it's called a new D dictionary yes. of the fairies and it's is uh, it, it's not trying to she makes it very she's very explicit that it's not trying to replace Catherine Briggs's works it's kind of an update with yes. new things we found out um as well as some of the 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 the, the, the folklore that went into Catherine Briggs's book yes. so that's an option for you if you just cannot find Catherine Briggs's if you're looking for sort of an encyclopedic dictionary mm -hmm. um type of thing um you, Morgan Daimler's book published last year is obviously much easier to find so yeah, yeah. Awesome. I think we're, we're, we're kind of, we're actually running about on time, which is, which is a, a big thing for us. I think we're going to leave it there. I think we've got so much more to explore and um, just chatting through different aspects of this. Uh, so we've got megaliths, monoliths, ancient places that we can yeah. do. We've got the darker side of Fae that we can do. We've discussed about doing more, uh, looking at what liminal state is and, and what that actually means and exploring that uh, as a kind of beginner's guide. I think there's so many things that we can pick apart. Um, I, and I, I, I I sorry. Um, I, I I think going uh, one thing we I, I would very much like to you know as as a trained archaeologist that's that's my background going into the sites yes. especially the prehistoric sites. There's something you know there's a prevalence of fairies at prehistoric mm -hmm. sites. Mm -hmm. um, you know long barrows, round barrows, mm -hmm. um, eel forts, etc. And so, you know, why, why would they be accumulating there? Why have the stories accumulated? Mm -hmm. um, and do these places actually hold some sort of special energy that makes it easier for us, our consciousness, to mm -hmm. interact Access. with the fairies? So I'd, I'd love, I, th I think we should definitely do I'm it super excited program. about that one because my brain was just going... Pow, 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 pow. As you were saying well, that about uh, all, all the different theories that are out there, it, it is such a super exciting Sighting project, but, but if uh, uh, if you know we don't want to ho hog everything, uh, I'm sure Kate and I can could talk for hours and hours about everything <laughs> yeah. fa fairy. But do you want to just suggest that people might like to ask questions, and if we get some really good questions, we can sort of devote some time to to, to them. Yeah, so the, there's two things we'd like. Um, we love it when people, I've said this before, we love it when people put questions or comments below. It, it, it kind of makes it feel more personal, like we're talking to a, a, an audience and we know our audience. So although, um, I, I, hands up, I've always said this, I'm rubbish with technology and sort of getting back to people, et cetera, is, uh, is not my forte, not my strength, but we do read all of them. Uh, so please uh, drop us any kind of questions that you want to ask within reason nothing too personal might, might be you know so i want to give you a, a, a field all about asking us questions but if it's a, related to the sort of the paranormal the supernatural fey etc or any of the things we've been discussing today we have talked about doing a live as well at some point this year where it's uh, myself and neil maybe a couple of others where we can answer questions on a live stream it's not something that we've done before so uh, if that's something that you'd like to see please leave us a comment and, and let us know and also we are this year looking for guests so if you've had an experience that you want to come on and discuss with us try to get the bottom of what's actually happened a modern encounter even if it's a family member as you know a family story that 
that's come down the line ancestrally that uh, somebody's encountered the Fae. It could be, you know, have you seen Bigfoot? I'm still waiting for that person to come forward and say, I've seen Bigfoot. Um, or, you know, anything within those realms that you, you want to kind of chat about. Or if you're an author or a podcaster, that would like to come and sit on the virtual sofa big shout out and love it to have you along just um you know drop us a comment and and get in touch you can contact me via uh, facebook uh it's kate hair girl ray on facebook and um i'm not going to vouch for you neil on that one but um, i'm also on instagram under the same name so you can find me there so if you want to drop me a message um then i'll be more than happy to to have a chat and and see where we can go so are we, are we, do we think that that's I, I feel like again we've only scratched like a tiny amount of the surface of, of what fairies are and an introduction to them because we could have we could have you know introduced you to a whole range maybe we should do that go through an encyclopedic type of, yeah. of parade of who's who um and origins and that kind of thing maybe, maybe do it in segments sort of a to b b to c that could take us all year we could be here yeah. all year you're thinking on the job here, aren't you, Kate? I am. I am. <laughs> <laughs> it's all that energy floating around. I'm like, pow, 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 pow. yeah, yeah. I'll remember none of it by the time I stop recording. <laughs> <laughs> right, guys. Thank you very much, Neil. It's been an absolute pleasure as always, and um, hoping uh, that you'll drop your comments below. And a, a pleasure to to be here and for you lot to listen to us ramble on. So. Thanks, guys, and we'll see you very, very soon.